Tommy Taylor, the Orient captain, is one of three players on view tonight who have experienced the ultimate in the FA Cup. Taylor was in West Ham's Cup winning side of 1975. And Mervyn Day, these days in the Orient goal, was also a winner in that final against Fulham. While David Price, Crystal Palace's substitute tonight, picked up his winner's medal in 1979 with Arsenal, for whom he played in three FA Cup finals. Tonight's Orient side also includes Bobby Fischer and Nigel Gray, survivor of the club's only semi-final appearance four years ago. There's one change in this lineup from Saturday. Jimmy Hallibone, wearing number six, comes in at right back for the injured Keith Osgood. Palace also make one change, a straight selection choice with Tommy Langley preferred to Ian Walsh in attack. This team retains one connection with Palace's best ever cup performance, centre-half Jim Cannon, who helped the club to the semi-final under Malcolm Allison. Tonight's referee, as it was on Saturday, is Neville Ashley from Nantwich. Crystal Palace will kick off on the strip tonight of red and blue stripes and they defend the goal to the right in the first half with both sides looking to the FA Cup to provide some emphasis to a season that has been disappointing for them in the second division forward by John Margerison and the flag raised for offside Paul Barron in the Palace goal there's the understudy at Arsenal when they reached two FA Cup finals so has tasted cup atmosphere Orient play with Tommy Taylor as a free defender behind a back line of four and it's something of a contrast in styles between these two sides Crystal Palace like to play their way through midfield The long kick from Mervyn Day is important in the way that Orient play. They like to get the ball to their front players as quickly as possible and build from there. Here's Vince Hilaire. Brooks. Now David Bolter. Stopped again by Hewton breaks for Silkman. And Godfrey again, a chance to show his pace and getting good part of the shot and Barron just recovered after the mishandling. The shot was struck down the wind by Kevin Godfrey after Henry Hewton had done well with the block to get possession for Orient. Silkman's pass here and Godfrey struck it with power and Barron with the mishandling but he got away with it. Jerison. Oh, getting a little tight, but it comes for Foster, who's ventured forward and ran straight into Wicks. Murphy. And it's three against two at the moment on the break for Palace. And Murphy getting it wide for Mabbott, who looks for Langley, who looks for Smiley. And what a fine goal! Neil Smiley in the 11th minute. Mabbott's cross was played early. Langley was aware of Smiley's presence and the volley was sweetly struck. Day got his hands to it but couldn't keep it out. So after the goalless game at Selhurst Park on Saturday. We've had to wait less than 12 minutes here in the replay. It's Hallibone forward. And now Godfrey. Orient wants a penalty. And they've got it. Within a minute, Godfrey brought down.
Palace guilty of a lapse in concentration. And as the ball broke off Jimmy Hallibone, and Smiley and Bolter both going in, Godfrey went down, the penalty was given. And it's Ian Moores stepping up to take it. And misses it. And puts his head in his hands. A reaction that's copied by some of his teammates as well. Moores leaning back. And it was always going too high. Forward from Brooks. Langley doing the running. Taylor with him. Hilaire. In from Hinchelwood. Day coming with the fist. Chance for Bolter to play it back, and the goalkeeper goes again and almost loses it to Kevin Mabbott. Godfrey guided off skillfully for Hallibone. Moore's waiting on the far post, and a useful cross too. It's the second such effort. In this opening 18 minutes from Jimmy Hallibone, the driven cross, and Paul Barron just finger-tipping it for the corner. It's Foster, and the header from Godfrey against the bar. Margerison, Godfrey. Kevin Godfrey coming in behind Colin Foster. For the in-swinging corner from Barry Silkman. And Godfrey's header coming out off the bar. And pushing by Foster on Cannon. And Palace can breathe again. Certainly, Palace do lead against the pattern of the play so far. Gray's header. Here's Mavert. Touch from Hilaire. He is being fouled. Murphy waiting while Wicks comes forward. Cannon is there as well. Same for Wicks. And Smiley found it almost dropping his way again. It was cleared in the end by Ian Moores. Brooks. Langley turning. Away from Silkman. And asked too much by Godfrey's return pass and Bolter is away here. Mabbott arriving on the far post and superb handling from Day. It was Godfrey's mistake that set David Bolter in here and Mabbott was waiting beyond Mervyn Day who plucked it out of the air. Wicks, running above Godfrey. Godfrey taking on Bolter again. And it's becoming an interesting little duel between these two. And it's produced another corner for Orient. Which means 
the big defenders come up again. Foster and Gray. It was Hewton, in fact, who got the first header, and Smiley, who made rather a meal of the clearance. And it might break for Silkman, who was perhaps more conscious of the challenge of Hilaire. And slice the shot well off target. The ball bobbling around in front of Paul Barron. On from Langley. Taylor's header. Langley again. Given away by Taylor to Brooks. And struck well. It was dipping and swerving from Sean Brooks. Just made a yard for the shot. And it had day scrambling. Brooks. Langley. Here's Mabbott. It finally comes to Orient with Tommy Taylor. He was helped out by Fisher. But Palace so quick to close Orient down. Godfrey. Early from Silkman. And it's Hewton who's made the run this time. Halley Burns there as well. And Godfrey. Well, they're shooting on sight here. And Kevin Godfrey curses his luck. One touch to control it, and then blazing away with the second touch. And Barron was happy to see it go wide. Thomas Gray. Foster gets a long leg to it. On from Fisher. This is Moores, a challenge with Wicks and it broke for Orient. Godfrey, who looked as though he came back from an offside position, now Halibone. Halibone again and again, Wicks gets in the way. But my impression was that Orient were a little fortunate earlier in that move, but Kevin Godfrey wasn't flagged offside. Godfrey. Kevin Bolter plenty to think about again. Hallibone can't keep it in. Divert it for Langley. Palace will be quite happy just to get the ball forward and regroup. Morant will look to feed again off Mervyn Bay's long clearance, but the half-time whistle denies them. So Crystal Palace go in, leading by the goal in the 12th minute from Neil Smiley. And with Smiley back helping out within the next minute, it's a contributory cause to Palace giving away the penalty, which was missed by Ian Moores. So at half-time here at Brisbane Road, it's Orient nil, Crystal Palace 1, and we'll be right back with the second half. Orient start the second half. They've only been beaten once in their last nine games. But they've got a genuine fight on here against the Crystal Palace side, who lead by one goal to nil going into the second half. Palace have profited in the first 45 minutes from the mobility of Mabbott and Langley. Fisher's long ball looks for Godfrey, and Bolter is across covering. Langley guiding it on. And Mabbott, it's out of play. 
Tommy Taylor was always trying to let it run, but Kevin Mabbott wasn't giving it up easily. Layoff back from Brooks. Driven in by Brooks. No real problem for Day, who again looks to use the ball quickly from his hands. Good for his touch. His pass Silkman and Palace break with Langley. And it was fortunate for Orient that he couldn't collect. Hilaire. Hallibone's header. Good run from Hinchelwood, a fine pass to find him from Murphy. And that's Mavert, who, like most Palace players, has found goals hard to come by recently. But Hinchelwood's cross picked him out, but Mavert couldn't keep the header down. And Dorian make a substitution. Barry Silkman has gone off, and a striker, Mark McNeil, is coming on as Orient look to vary their pattern here. Murphy tackling back on Taylor, and he goes on. Aiming for Hallibone. Walter's header, drops for Foster, who waved Godfrey away. McNeil. Wants a free kick, doesn't get it. And Palace with two against two. Mavert taking on Gray. Langley is with him. And a shooting chance for Langley. And in all honesty, he should have done better. The danger is apparent for Orient when they push forward in numbers. Mavert leading the break. Langley let it run into his stride. And as the goal opened up, he couldn't hit the target. Neil, Smiley got the touch for Palace. Godfrey, a yard to turn this time. Now McNeil and Orient do have numbers forward here. It's too high for Hewton, and it was Hilaire back covering. And Smiley's pass, picking out Langley. who takes on Gray and puts the cross too near to the goalkeeper this is Taylor Hallibone McNeil coming short using Mar Jerison and it breaks down on the edge again for Orient it still with Ian Moores, who more than anyone would like to get the balance right after missing the penalty. Foster brought down by Mabbott. Taylor then with the free kick. Foster poised to make his run, so too is Moores. It's aimed for Foster, and Foster almost looped it inside that far post. He scored his first senior goal in the fourth round replay here against Huddersfield. And he was so close to another then. He was certainly going in. off Mabbott, Brooks was up quickly and Mabbott reacted quickly, Hilaire with the extra gear of pace and the shot that in the end was fired just too high, 
At times, uh, an enigmatic player, Vince Hilaire. So much talent and the explosive pace there. But the angle was against him for the shot. Cannon, and it was Taylor's mistake, and Gray, it's wide, and it's a corner. It would have been an own goal. Nigel Gray bailing out the mistake of Tommy Taylor as Mabbott closed in. Day was beaten and watched anxiously. And Palace had the corner with Wicks on the near post and it came off Gray again and finally put over by Langley from right under the bar as Cannon and Langley have the inquest put the ball dropping dangerously for Orient Moores. Long from Hilaire. Mabbott chasing. Foster's there. And a more orthodox back pass this time. Murphy. Jerry Murphy, part of a Crystal Palace midfield, who have done well in this game. Wicks again, making sure the header was his. Smiley. Now Murphy, who was caught by Halibone. Terry Murphy, who played for England as a schoolboy, had opted for the Republic of Ireland as full international status. Hilaire. Cannon. Jumps again. And it drops for Hilaire! Who could have wrapped up this replay. He was first to the loose ball, took it on into an open position and with Day committed, put it a good two yards wide. Orient fortunate perhaps still to be in the hunt. Hilaire. Gray trying to get back, and it was Smiley who was arriving, and it's a goal kick, although there seemed to be a ricochet. Hilaire, the instigator again. And Smiley timed his approach well. really still looking to bypass the effectiveness of Wicks and Cannon and it's Palace's free kick that skimmed off Nigel Gray and will be a Palace corner will take it. Wicks this time has positioned himself beyond the far post. Alongside Cannon. Hilaire right in on the line. And it's Wicks! 
Well, they do tend to strike every corner and free kick towards the head of Steve Wicks, and you can see why. And Jerry Murphy is going off for Palace. So David Price steps back into the FA Cup limelight. Orient have got to do something to alter the balance of play here. Palace continue to come up with the answers. had spotted an infringement as the ball went out of play. So Taylor plays the free kick short for Moores. Being forced away from the danger area, back from Taylor. Hinchwood covers, and anyway, the linesman flagging for offside. immediately apply the pressure in the most direct of manners. They have another corner. Which Sean Brooks will take. And Wicks, and it's off the line from Hallibone. Only as far as Brooks. And Wicks couldn't make it a second time. But Jimmy Hallibone holding his position on the post. Saved Orient then. As Wicks came in, Hallibone got it to safety. And it's one long last ball forward. For Godfrey. Can he get the shot in here? Kevin Godfrey! Well, that may well be the last strike. We're into injury time. Godfrey, who's been the pick, the pick of Orient's attack. But it was a yard away. Mr Ashley has had a look at the watch. But blows the whistle for a free kick to Orient. go back today to go forward and Crystal Palace are through to the last eight of the FA Cup Neil Smiley's goal is decisive and Orient go off ruining the penalty miss of Ian Moores and also ruining other first half chances that pass them by. So a final score at Brisbane Road. It's Orient nil, Crystal Palace one. So it's Crystal Palace who go through to the sixth round away to Queen's Park Rangers on March the 6th. A quick word now from the two managers, Ken Knighton of Orient, but first, Steve Kember of Crystal Palace. Yeah, I, I was told that um, no matter how we went on, today I'd got the job to the end of the season regardless so uh, you know this is ice on the cake for the lads um, you know we're in the last eight now we've got a, a nice little trip to QPR now and uh, hopefully we'll get through that one as well. But apart from the lads I mean it hasn't done your cause any harm either has it? No I mean I've just been taking it week to week game to game and hopefully the more wins I can get the, the stronger my case gets you know um, I'm enjoying it anyway. Do you feel under a great deal of pressure I mean caretaker manager well, being manager of most clubs these days isn't a great deal of fun, but caretaker manager, you're in a hiding to nothing. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, uh, the lads, of the actual football side of it, the lads have uh, shown a great response to any, anything we've told them to do. And I've just, I've, I'm quite enjoying it, to be honest with you. Now, this trip to QPR, this, you said, you said of this, this was the one game, the one draw you didn't want. 
Well, obviously, uh, if you're going to get in the last eight, uh, you know, you want all the advantages you can possibly get, hopefully a nice home draw. Um, you know, to get an away draw at QPR when you've got to go and play on the AstroTurf is obviously an advantage to them. Uh, there's nothing we can do about it, and obviously we have to go there and do our best. How much of a disadvantage is it going to be to you? Well, the only thing is we can train on it for the, the week before, but uh, with so many midweek games at the moment, we can't really get on it before that, you know. So we've got that week before them. Um, they've been training on it all season. You know, it's obviously an advantage because they've been playing it eight months now. And what about the idea itself? I mean, apart from the fact they can practice on it more often, obviously, what about the idea of OmniTurf itself? Um, well, obviously, I've, I mean, I've played on it in America and it's very good, but I think it's good over there because they play in the summer. Um, I don't think uh, an Asher turf when you've got wet and rain and stuff on it, uh, it's, a, it's a good surface. Um, I've not played it myself, but uh, from what I've heard from other people, they don't reckon it's a very good surface anyway. So it's something you wouldn't want to see catch on in this country? Not really, no. I know that people say from the financial point of view it would be a good thing for football, but um, I don't think it's uh, football as we know it in England. Ken Knighton, a disappointing night. In the end, disappointing night, Alan, yes, but we've done really well to get this far in the cup competition and it's obviously a great disappointment to lose in the fifth round, but all credit to Crystal Palace and I hope that they go all the way. The team must be feeling very disappointed, to put it mildly. Ian Moore is in particular, I would imagine. What's the atmosphere in the dressing room like just now? Well, the players are obviously very despondent. Um, I felt that in the first half, we didn't deserve to go in losing by 1-0. But in the second half, we didn't deserve to win the game. And all credit to Crystal Palace, I thought they looked the better side in the second 45 minutes. Um, Ian Moore's um, is not normally our penalty taker, but uh, because of his recent... Um, success in front of goal, he decided to accept the ball and go and take the penalty. Unfortunately, he put it over the top instead of in the back of the net. But I don't blame Ian at all for that. This represents uh, a great transformation, of course, from yourself, having moved from the north to the south, a smaller club now. What have you found is the biggest challenge facing you? Yeah, we've changed things around a little bit, and I like to think that, uh, that we are well on our way now to establishing the club, certainly in the second division this season. Um, there's still a lot of hard work to be done before we can retain our second division status. We've got some very important games coming up. I criticise uh, the support, or rather the lack of it, since I've been at the club. Uh, but also our supporters and the Crystal Palace supporters turned up and gave us just over 10,000 people tonight, which I think for this club is a very good turnout. I think it's the best crowd that they've had for some time. I'm very disappointed for our supporters that we let them down because we didn't win the game. Uh, I, from my own personal point of view, I'm getting tremendous job satisfaction here. Um, it gave me a lift when I needed it because I'd been out of work for six months um, after doing what I thought was a very good job at Sunderland. An hour of then half my mates are here, so it's, it's hard you know, for me as well as some of the other players. But it's a quarter-final of the Cup. I've never played in a quarter-final and I can't wait to play. And I'm sure the lads can't. You know, it, it is the big time. And this club, Crystal Palace, have, have had a hard two years. So it's... it's I think it's fantastic to be in the quarterfinals of an FA Cup. Well, obviously, you know, if you're going to get in the last eight, uh, you know, you want all the advantages you can possibly get. Hopefully, a nice home draw. Um, you know, to get an away draw at QPR when you've got to go and play on the AstroTurf is obviously an advantage to them. Uh, there's nothing we can do about it, and obviously, we have to go there and do our best. How much of a disadvantage is it going to be to you? Well, the only thing is we can train on it for the, the week before, but uh, with so many midweek games at the moment, we can't really get on it before that, you know. So we've got that week before them. Um, they've been training on it all season. You know, it's obviously the advantage because they've been playing it eight months now. And what about the idea itself? I mean, apart from the fact they can practice on it more often, obviously, what about the idea of OmniTurf itself? Um, well, obviously, I've, I mean, I've played on it in America and it's very good, but I think it's good over there because they play in the summer. Um, I don't think uh, an AstroTurf, when you've got wet and rain and stuff on it, uh, it's, a, it's a good surface. Um, I've not played on it myself, but uh, from what I've heard from other people, they don't reckon it's a very good surface anyway. So it's something you wouldn't want to see catch on in this country? Not really, no. I know that people say from the financial point of view it would be a good thing for football, but um, I don't think it's uh, football as we know it in England. This is the surface that Steve Kemba dislikes and one which has attracted so much criticism. How does Queen's Park Rangers manager Terry Venables react to such remarks? That's not unusual. That's what they all say, isn't they? I think that uh, it's a typical sort of thing to say. I think it's an excuse if they lose, and if they win, it makes him as if he's done a great feat. Um, the pitch is flat, and it's a good surface. We've lost on it this year, and we've won on it this year, so I always find the teams that win don't complain, the teams that lose do. And this is one of those things that he's got a double-edged answer whichever way it goes. But it's, it's, it'll be a game of skill, and they've got their skillful players, very much so, and I think it'll be a super football game.
I don't th I'm not really too concerned about the words and all that beforehand because it's all nonsense. The main thing is the game and let's see who deserves to win. Although having played on the surface in America himself, he's possibly better qualified to uh, judge the pitch than some of your other critics this season. Well, he hasn't got to play, has he? It's his players that's got to play. He's only got to watch, he's got to sit like I do. So, it's, uh, you know, I, I don't feel it's um, anything at all because it's not the same surface as what, you play, what he's played on in America. So how much of an advantage do you think you'll have of any? No, I think a cup tie you don't have an advantage. It's a one-off and um, anything, it can go either way. Um, in the sixth round, you, whatever your pitch is, you, you're open for a home draw. Um, so I think that uh, it'll be a, an excellent game. Obviously, it goes without saying, tremendous rivalry between the two clubs, players moving on, yourself moving on. Mm. How do you personally feel as this one approaches? Um, I think looking at the, the, the two teams that were playing, Orient and Palace, it would have been a good draw, whichever side. I think that we will have four or 5,000 people more, being as it's Palace, so it'll add more interest. But I think that being as the prize is such a big one, all the things of the past league games about the personalities and everything involved will be the second issue. I think the first issue will be hoping to win the game because there's a semi-final prize ahead. But it will give it a special edge though, will it not, the personalities involved? I think that there is an edge, but I don't think as much as before. I think the game was going to be too important for that because it's a one-off and um, it gives you a chance to get to the cup final.